Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel today. Today's video is all about the new phone, the LG Wing 5G. Very cool phone. I grabbed one off eBay for $180.50. After tax and shipping, it was $201 and I want to say 37 cents. Very cool phone. I love this thing so far. I mean, even when I'm doing screen mirroring on my computer, if I flip it open, it does go horizontal with this tool, which I have had issues upon issues of this tool figuring out how to go uh, horizontal screen. As you can see, I have everything running here. It's an awesome phone. If we go to settings, I can show you that this is indeed the wing because I can't give away my IMEI. It's set to zero right now because I messed something up. But, as you can see, this thing is awesome. You can see it's the Wing. Oh, I guess my serial number's there, but whatever. And, awesome phone. I mean, I love playing with it so far. It hasn't, uh, you know, been too much of a hassle yet. But, how did I get this phone so cheap, you might ask. Actually, you know, I would hope you would ask or I would hope you were curious because that's why you're watching this video. I got this phone so cheap because it was a demo device. These things have been all over eBay lately as demo devices because LG shut down their mobile phone division. Now, what that means for the consumer is the market has been flooded with current LG demo phones, mostly the Velvet V60 and the Wing because those were the two most current phones from LG. With that, now the market being kind of flooded with these demo devices creates a little bit of a headache for consumers. The demo devices can be used with uh, like mobile networks, but it can be a little bit of a headache and a little bit confusing to get it running and get the demo mode disabled. Luckily, People over on XDA Developers, which is the only website you should check when it comes to modifying the Android system or any tutorials on how to mess with your device, this is where, you know, there's a group, a small community of people that have created a very nice tutorial to at least get the demo mode off. What does not work still is the fingerprint reader. And I think a few other small things that you just wouldn't notice. But the fingerprint reader doesn't really matter because of face unlock. With that, I'm going to uh, show you guys how to remove demo mode. It is already removed from my device, so use your imagination a little bit. Um, <laughs> but I'm at least going to go through the steps, explain the steps out, explain the downloads, explain why you need the specific files and go from there and even show you guys how to enable 5g on your device um once you have mobile data working because i do at least know how to do that i did get that far so without further ado let's get into it this thing keeps locking up stop it so first of all you want to download you want to make sure you have adb system wide installed on your computer just to make things easier you want to have the lg mobile driver which you can get from lg's website right here uh, right here, you want to just download the universal mobile driver for Windows. And then from there, you also need LG Up Terminal Flash, which you can get from right here. And you need the firmware. The specific firmware you need, if you want to take this step, is the Korean firmware. So you want to click I'm not a robot and then download. I am currently downloading actually the South African firmware. Uh, to flash to my device to see if that actually brings fing uh, fingerprint scanner, you know, up to par and working for it. I'm willing to throw my device on the line because I can always just throw it back on eBay. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. So removing demo mode is realistically pretty simple. There's actually only a couple steps, and thanks to the community that's out there, We've even, those people have even figured out the code to get into the system to actually disable demo and all that. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. 
I need to open this up. And, you know, we're going to go through the steps together. So first of all, give me one second. I'm going to make it so the screen stops turning off so quickly. There we go. So first thing you're going to want to do is actually on the device, you need to make sure you have USB debugging enabled. As you can see, after you install your drivers, get ADB set up, you need to make sure you have developer options set up. So the easiest way to do that is simply open up your settings. And what you need to do is scroll down to system, go to about phone, and then you just, just like every other device, tap software number, and click this over and over, you will get a pop-up in which you need to type in this code, L310MC570G. Once you type that in, you can disable the demo mode, and you're good to go. Once you're in there, once you're into developer settings, I should say, you want to enable USB debugging. You don't need to worry about OEM unlock, and some people actually don't have OEM unlock for some reason on their wing devices. Whether it's a demo device or a real device, it's completely missing. So hit or miss if you're going to have that, but more on that later. So enable USB debugging, and you're good to go. Now what you need to do is open up the command prompt. So I'm just going to do one. You want to also make sure you have your ADB installed system-wide because that way you're going to be able to uh, know exactly what you're doing. So with ADB, just do ADB devices. I actually always recommend if you're doing anything ADB, always do ADB kill server. I know that just killed my screen recording for the phone, but you want to do kill server just to make sure you have it um, up to date and refreshed, I guess is the best way to put it, because you can run into issues with security keys and stuff like that. If uh, you have no idea, you might be running an out of date ADB. I had a tool on my computer that installed ADB to my system 32 folder and I did not know. And it was running an incredibly outdated ADB and it was causing all sorts of issues for me with some commands not even existing. It was like three and a half years out of date. So make sure you're running the right version. Make sure you're running the newest. So from there you want to do ADB devices. Hard to type around microphone. And it'll come up with a pop-up on your screen once you plug the phone into your computer. Uh, plug your phone in first, then run ADB devices. <laughs> I kind of forgot. I already have it plugged in. It'll ask you on screen to give the computer permission to connect to the phone. And then it'll give you the serial number thingy name thingy right here that you see. And once you have that all set up, we need to run some ADB shell commands. We do ADB shell, hit enter, and then do am start dash s com dot android dot settings. And a lot of people know, don't know is there's a lot of these weird little settings things that you can bring up by command prompt. Slash dollar sign device admin settings activity. There's actually one for doing FRP bypasses, if you guys want a video on that. Now, oh, I must have typed it wrong. Your best bet always with these kind of things is copy and paste them. Copy and paste. Honestly, when you have longer code like this, copy and paste. There we go. So you'll actually have a third option while your phone is still in demo mode. You want to disable it. From there, you want to type uh, the next command, which is pm uninstall dash k dash dash user zero, which means main user, com.lge.retail mode. That will uninstall the retail mode APK. From there, you can do exit. And now all you have to do is restart the device. It will no longer be in demo mode, but not everything is going to quite work yet. So that at least removes the retail mode. That removes all the uh, that removes some of the blocks that they put on the device as a retail device. But there's one more step you really have to do. Now you can see that I have some Korean on my screen. Um, 
because you have to flash a Korean firmware to your device to fully remove retail mode. So from there, once your device is restarted, make sure you have your drivers and everything installed. You need to download that LG Up Flash utility software and put it specifically on your C drive. If you do not put it on your C drive, it will not work because it actually has some stuff that is hard coded to C slash LG Up dash Flash dash utility. Some stuff is hard coded here. And you also need to put the KDZ file, the firmware file, directly in this folder for uh, the South Korean firmware. And that's how you remove a lot of the restrictions. So you want to run this LG Up Flash utility tool. I don't believe you need to run it as admin, but if you have some issues with the computer running it, that's probably why you need to run it as admin. It just depends on how your Windows computer is set up. So from there, you need to figure out what port number your device is going to be on once you put it into download mode. So to put it into download mode, you have to turn the phone off. So sorry, I got to close that. Turn the phone off entirely, and then as it's turning back on, you want to hold the volume up button to get it into LG's version of download mode. Very similar to Samsung download mode. But once it's off, you will see a little download mode uh, screen on the phone. And you can actually find out if it's connected successfully by typing 1 in this tool detecting and you want it to turn up as LG and net diag one which is going to be this COM port right here number 13 Hit enter to go back and you want to start doing your flash so you can do two it'll detect the COM ports again just to give you a reminder type in 13 if you don't see it showing up that means your drivers are installed incorrectly by the way undo 13 on COM port 13. After that, it will list all the KDZ files you have in your folder, and you want to type it 100% correctly. 100N11B underscore COM underscore KR OP 0119.KDZ. Then hit enter, and it'll start flashing the phone. I'm not going to do this because I already did it takes about five to ten minutes for the full flash to be done if it looks like it's done and it's actually booting all the way into android it's not done quite yet give it that full thing until it says it's done on here once it says done on here then you're good to go but it takes about five to ten minutes and i'm not going to make you watch that whole process and it's kind of pointless when i'm going to be sitting here doing it again in about an hour and 13 minutes because I'm downloading another firmware. <laughs> so I don't want to do it twice. But once it's all done, from there, it'll be booted back up into Android. I'm going to actually unplug so I can get booted back up. If you want to get out of the firmware update mode, hold volume down and power until the screen goes black and then let go of power or let go of volume down. It's usually about 10 seconds. Then just hold power and it'll start turning back on. And then you can plug it back in. You're good to go. It'll come back up in a second and I will show you how to access the service menu. Service menu is where you can get things like 5G working. I just noticed I am probably louder in your right ear than I am in your left this entire video. I didn't know this thing did like really specific side angle stuff, my microphone. Holy crap, I'm sorry. Give me one second, I'll get the screen recording software open back up, and I will show you whatchamacallit. One sec. I've had this microphone for like a year and a half, two years, and I just now found out that it does this. One thing to let you know before I forget, every time you turn the phone on with the uh, Korean firmware on it, you will get an error on the screen. You can completely ignore that error. It doesn't mean anything. Just let it ride. It doesn't seem to matter. I am trying to find somebody that has an LG wing. Uh, shut up. I'm not going to try to... 
I'm a technician. I will remove this battery if I want to. I'm trying to find somebody with an LG wing that is a standard model from a store that's a real world customer device. So we can compare the service menu and go, you know, over all the code and make this phone 100% just like a real device. Haven't found somebody with an LG wing yet. But let's go over that service menu. I need to get the little code up for it. One sec. All right, I got my cheat sheet up. I meant to have this typed up before we started this recording, and I forgot. That's just how I roll with my videos. Deal with it. So you're going to open up your phone app, and you want to type in this phone number specifically. Pound star 462633 star pound 100 pound. It'll open up this hidden menu, service menu, and you want to go under field test. So as you can see, I have the whole list out right here. You go field test, modem settings, uh, rat selection. I don't ever want to select rats. And you want to enable uh, 5G by selecting this specific GSM WCDMA LTE 5G NSA. Whew, that's a mouthful. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here, but that's the one you mainly want to select. You can try this TDS one. I don't know what TDS is, but this is the one that supposedly works. So you click that, it says success, then you can go back and you have 5G. People have tried enabling the fingerprint reader by doing the service tests that are in here. Unfortunately, they don't work. Um, on the LG Velvet, they actually did get the uh, fingerprint uh, reader to work on demo devices by going service menu, scrolling down, and they actually have a fingerprint option where they can do a fingerprint test. And what it does is it lights up that area of the screen where the fingerprint reader is and they can actually calibrate it. Unfortunately, handprint calibration does not work here. Um, doesn't actually do anything but it happens i suppose so other than that i am trying like i've said i'm trying to find somebody who has an lg wing that is a you know customer public device so i can actually mess with some of this stuff because you can actually change things like nt code you can change that to uh, you know, whatever it actually is supposed to be. I just forget where that code is. Oh, yeah, you can forever enable USB debugging under LDB. Um, I don't know what LDB is, but you can enable it there. I had found something earlier digging through here where I was able to... There it is. So NT code. So this looks very close to, oh, the IMEI. Generate? Generate. I can just generate random IMEIs. Okay. Now I have an IMEI, I think. Edit. I don't know what this is, so I'm not going to mess with it. I'm also not going to mess with this. Good to know about this menu, because if you're ever banned from a game... You can actually come in here and just generate a new Wi-Fi MAC address, which this might only be for testing. I don't know. But you can also generate a new Bluetooth address. But the code you get when you first boot up the device definitely has to do with this NT code. And there's got to be something with all these Fs right here that if we modify this NT code, it might actually get rid of that error we get on booting up the phone. So... You know, here's to hoping later on. Also, something with the fingerprint reader could be because of this right here, whatever this is. I don't know if I rotate the screen. It's going to do anything. Oh, it's going to make me put in the phone number again for the code stuff. So I don't think... Let me see. Rotate. There we go. 
Let me try this once more. I'll get back to that screen and see if we can see that full fingerprint code. So there is the full code for the fingerprint thing. Don't know if that's going to help anyone. Also, here's those Fs again that uh, give us the error. I need to somehow change this. If I can change this to user debug or something like that, we're probably much better off. Looks like the IMEI did stay though, which is nice. Looks like I can edit this, but I don't know what it does. I don't want to mess with NT code when I don't know what it is. But, oh, don't right click, I guess. Anyway, that's it for the LG wing for right now. Let's find out if that IMEI stayed before we finish this video up. Do I have an IMEI in about phone now? I do not. So apparently generating the IMEI right there doesn't do anything. I will throw a SIM card into this when I am off video. I'm told that it should get mobile data once you flash that Korean firmware and it should get 5G the way that I showed you. My device does not for some reason. Um, the next thing that I'm going to work on is figuring out if you can bootloader unlock this and root it. There are some files we need that are inside that KDZ file. If I can extract that KDZ file, we might be able to root it. No promises. LG does not provide bootloader unlocks through their service right now. So we're kind of shit out of luck on rooting this, unfortunately. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had some fun making this one. This is the kind of stuff I want to do more often on my channel. You're here for the game modding and stuff like that. I don't do that stuff anymore. It got boring. I got tired of destroying gaming communities, so sucks. I'd also like to start a podcast because that's what all 30-ish year old men who have nothing to do with their life decide to do with their friends. So yeah, if you made it this far into the video, let's make people wonder why you are commenting mustard in the comments below. We'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Who else ends their videos that way? And I will see you tomorrow. Who is that? Is that Lewis Rossman? Am I watching too many of his videos at work? Am I just rambling now at this point? I probably am.